controller lane. So actually we're going to start with some of the stuff up here and then finish out with the controller lane, which I think is a pretty cool part of this. A very flexible and powerful. But what we need to do is talk just real briefly about this area because that will lead right into that. So first of all we have all the note names and you'll notice that these all came up correctly with what was attached to the session drummer synth that we're using. Right? So that is all mapped out for us in most of the cases, especially when using sonar things. But if you need to create a different percussion map or other MIDI map, you can double click on each of these and it'll bring up the drum map manager and you can say new and new and it allows you to say the in note and what the out note is, what the name to give it, what channel it's on. If you want to use a, a MIDI port, etc., you can add or subtract velocity and change the velocity scale and then it gives you your available ports and channels. Kind of a, an advanced thing for an advanced user. So if you don't know what all this stuff means I wouldn't recommend doing it at this point but if you do need to use this you'll know because it won't line up here with what you're expecting it to. So you'll have this stuff in here. If you're using external MIDI then it won't just be sending it straight out. You may need to change some stuff. However, we can come into the row number here and change some of those values as well. So you can change them here or go through the map. Now we can mute and solo each of the rows. And then we have some offsets for velocity. We can add an overall offset. So if I want to add 100 velocity numbers to this row. Or we can do a multiplier. One means it's going to go straight through. And if you go to 2, it's going to actually expand that so things will get louder. And if you go less than that, it will compress it so things will be much more controlled, a lot less variance in the actual velocity changes. Okay, so that brings us down to the controllers here. And this allows us to do some cool stuff. If you know about continuous controllers, and uh, if you're using a sequencer like Sonar, you should probably start to get up on it. I don't know much about it. There is another VTC course which covers MIDI fundamentals and it's uh, one that I did and it covers a lot of what continuous controllers are and what each of them do and how you might use them. This is a great application of that. In this case I'm going to click on this and it's going to say, oh, new value type because I don't have anything entered into there yet besides that one. I'm going to go to continuous control 11 which is an expression control and now I can draw things in You'll hear this when I push play. So I can create a lot more expressiveness with the pattern using this type of thing. Once I have one of them, I can do another one. Seven is another volume type control. So I could just take a long fade out there. And now I can go back and forth between the two by clicking here and seeing all the different data. And you'll see it has nice color coding as well. So very powerful. Things that you could do with continuous controllers beside this would be things like pitch control. And you could also do things with pedals and other types of continuous control. Things you might have an actual interface for, but instead you could draw them here. So that's what those are for. Very powerful, very flexible, but a little bit of a learning curve if you've never used them before. So, that's control lane. Let's move on now and actually do a pattern with this and see how it works.